It really makes no odds to me whether I'm playing an epic RPG, a simulation strategy game, or a platformer like Planet of Lana, what it has to do is to take me somewhere else, to transport me to somewhere I haven't experienced before, and to do it in a way that's not only enjoyable, but also unique. Initially, Planet of Lana caught my eye because, well, it looks amazing. It reminded me of something Studio Ghibli could have cooked up, and it's certainly been a journey for it to arrive on the Nintendo Switch. So a thank you to the publisher for the review copy. And believe it or not, this is actually the debut game of Wishfully Studios, who were only founded in 2018. Is it smooth sailing on Switch or a Titanic first trip? Well, my name's Mark Walker. Welcome back to Switch Up. Now, let's find out. The best visual storytelling not only does exactly that, but it also teaches you how to play the game within the first five minutes. To do both of those things and also make it fun is quite difficult, but Planet of Lana achieves this. Now, what's the most fun thing you did as a child? Chances are somewhere up there would be a game of tag. And here, Lana and her sister find themselves running, jumping and creeping through their town, which teaches you the mechanics of how to play the game but also introduces you to their small, water-based society. It has a light-hearted, whimsical charm to it that lulls the player into a false sense of security. The characters use a pseudo-language, but their enunciations of certain words, they tell you more than enough to determine what it is they're actually saying. The story takes a drastic shift right from the get-go. With Lana separated from her sister, she sets out on an epic quest to try and get her back. Joining her in this feat is her very cute cat-like creature called Mui. Story-wise, this feels a little like an adaption of War of the Worlds, but it goes above and beyond with its environmental storytelling, something Studio Ghibli certainly know a thing or two about. Gameplay-wise, this is an epic, cinematic, puzzle platformer, with two distinct sides to the coin. On the one hand, you've got Lana. She runs, jumps, creeps and hides in long grass, and is able to give orders to her cat-like companion. Telling it where to go, what to interact with, and when to rejoin her. She has a few other abilities as well, like being able to pull boxes around, push switches and pull levers, and the balance of skill shifts back and forward throughout the game's playtime. Where initially Mui seems so much more agile and adept, able to jump up almost any ledge, with you simply dishing out your orders and sneaking through the grass, I like how the game switches things up when you discover that she absolutely hates water. This then means that you become the more able character in those areas, and the balance of cooperation and in turn their relationship is only aided by this design choice. The puzzles themselves are nicely designed. Some of them will have you pausing and scratching in your head, perhaps requiring specific timing to draw an enemy into moving out of position, while others are more traditional, such as having Mui sit by a switch, which lets Lana progress to a point where she can call her companion to join her. There are a couple of puzzles that show themselves a bit too often, things like lowering ropes down and having one character climb up but never to the point where it became a real negative, mainly because the main brunt of puzzling changes enough between areas that I could forgive some repetition. While not overly difficult, it can be a little punishing. Some of those timing-based puzzles, for example, have you evading a certain enemy, but if they catch sight of you, it's essentially game over and it will restart from that section. Now, thankfully, there are automatic checkpoints, meaning that you usually won't go more than a few minutes back. If you go back at all, you may just restart from the exact area you finished. Now, Saying that, there were still a couple of puzzles. There's that fine line, isn't there, where you're enjoying yourself, and then you die a couple of times, start to get a little frustrated, which in turn means you're not quite as careful, and then you die a number more times until it does get a little bit annoying. Planet of Lana did that to me a few times. As far as the game's pacing goes, well, it starts out very strong, really hooking you into the world with clever design, and interesting choices in terms of setting and character, only for it to become a little more plodding during the middle sections and then pick up massively towards the end. 
Some aspects of the game's controls are really strong. General movement and platforming, climbing up on ledges, lowering yourself down, or jumping away from walls to reach different areas, they make sense. Things like swinging on ropes, it feels the way it should and it's quite precise, if a little floaty in terms of the speed with which you move through the air. But where the controls are less responsive is in the way you control your companion. This is done sometimes by holding a trigger, using the right analog stick, and kind of pointing it in the direction you want the cat um, creature to go and it does have a semi lock on so it sticks to certain areas that potentially you'll want it to go is just not perfect. For those wanting an atmospheric epic feeling and enjoyable puzzle platformer that haven't potentially played this genre in a while I do think Planet of Lana as far as its story and gameplay goes does enough. They score 17 out of 20. Controls aren't quite as good as that they score 15 out of 20. You've probably noticed already the game on Nintendo Switch is actually running at 60 frames per second, which surprises me. It's a pleasant surprise for sure, and I can see a couple of areas where they've potentially reduced the image quality. You will notice some aliasing that certainly wasn't there on the Steam version of the game, but still, I think we can all agree 60 frames per second and looking this good, that's quite the achievement on the Nintendo Switch. Now, I will say we managed to experience one big bug. It calls the cat to disappear out of a box and then drop out of the sky, which meant you could not complete a puzzle. We had to restart the game, go back to an old save, work our way all the way back through again to get to that point and then it didn't happen. We also then couldn't recreate the same bug, so you probably won't ever experience it. And by all accounts, having chatted to the developers, we are the first to have had that. Yippee. <laughs> We haven't had any crashes. There are some performance stutters, so it looks like some form of memory loading or something where suddenly it will pause when you move between areas. It's important to note that this doesn't affect most of the gameplay because it really is when you're transitioning between spaces. Sound and music are exceptional. <laughs> Yay. It's one of those where you could close your eyes and just listen to it and still be able to picture where you are. And that's not surprising when you hear that it's created by Takeshi Furukawa, whose notable work also includes The Last Guardian. It's an intense and powerful piece of music. And while I didn't like the pseudo language the characters use quite as much as the musical score, I do still think that adds to the experience. Visuals and performance combined, they score 16 out of 20, losing a couple of points for those performance stutters and the bug we experienced. Experienced, sound and audio scores 19 out of 20. Planet of Lana will set you back £16.99, although it does have a discount today for the next 24 hours that's 10% cheaper than that. And as always, price is going to be the sticking point for many people because the game's only around four and a half to five hours long. It's funny because I almost don't see length <clears throat> as a negative anymore. It's experience, which is the top thing that I'm looking for, and this certainly delivers in that department. Now, with that said, I know that's not going to be the case for everyone. I give value 15 out of 20. Planet of Lana is a delightful little platform adventure with a couple of minor frustrations that manages to come together brilliantly by its close. Sure, it doesn't do everything perfectly, but you're going to be hard pressed not to find some of this charming. It gets a switch up score of 82%. Let me know, do you enjoy this one? Do you like the look of it? It's pretty lovely, isn't it? Thanks to the uh, publisher. Sorry for scaring you so much when I found that game breaking bug. I think you handled it well. <laughs> Thanks to our Patreons, our members, all of you that enjoy the content. And as always, for all things Switch, all the time, keep your Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya.